one of the earliest experiences I had in ministry was as a young minister in training at one church being told to go and uh, reach out and be a witness and uh, I fancied myself a poet so one of the places I like to go and build relationships where I talk to people about faith was well, coffee shop scenes and uh, where there'd be poetry nights and talking and I remember you know I, I'm not a confrontational in your face person but just making the point to just talk and build relationships with people and, and hear people's story and share my own and, and, and be struck by the number of people I met who said you know I I love Jesus. I I read about his life and what a difference he made. And you know how we would all be better if we acted like him. And I see how he spoke out for the outcast, the underdog. And I I just that's that's what I want to do. But you know, to be honest. The church, and that's not what I see. I, I, I'd love to get to know about Jesus, but the church that I see doesn't have a whole lot to do with the Jesus I read about, and that, that stuck with me over the years. How many people are torn wanting to, to learn about Jesus? But yet, feeling the church itself is the one place that doesn't try to live out Jesus' life. The one place that's not where his values would be walked. Many years later, I look, look back at that experience, and I, I wonder if that's where, why I got where I am now. Right now, I'm a minister and church planter. I uh, began as one as an independent church planter. My wife and I were working in churches that were um, places that if you didn't fit the particular mold, if you were a woman called to preach, if you were gay, or if you were transgendered, or, I could go through this list. You find yourself being pushed out, and we were at a church that a transgender person came in, and well, it became clear pretty quickly that, that all that talking about being welcome to all that the senior pastor and some of the lay leaders in the church there were saying wasn't wasn't the, wasn't true anymore. This one wasn't welcome. And that experience led us to start our first progressive Christian church, start Safe Haven Christian Community Church. Um, and at the heart of it all has been those people. So they're attracted to Jesus and they see Jesus in their life and they see that's what I want my life to be like. And they see his love and they say, if God is anything, it's, it's that. I want to know that. I want to experience that. I want to walk with that. But yet, when they turn to the churches in their community, they find that someone like them is not welcome. And that if they go there, they won't experience the love of Jesus first. And I think that's part of why I see this great need to plant progressive, welcoming churches. One of my great dreams is that while I live here in the South, to see throughout the Southeast of the United States, here in what I like to call the Dixie Belt, because prejudice doesn't have a thing to do with my Bible. 
So I can't call it Bible Belt. When we pass things like Amendment 1 in North Carolina, where we say we're going to treat gay people different, that doesn't have anything to do with my Bible. So I call it the Dixie Belt. But you see, throughout this Dixie Belt here, progressive churches popping up. And they're becoming these oases of love and acceptance and tolerance. Where the life of Jesus is falling, the best it can be. And the communities around them are transformed. By people looking out for justice, for peace, the inclusion that Jesus lived out every day. That's one of my dreams, one of my visions. And if that's a vision that resonates with you, I encourage you to get in touch with me. Um, while I'm one of the pastors at Diversity and Faith here, faith, so Diversity and Faith Church, the welcoming and affirming progressive church I serve, is part of a wider movement called Progressive Christianity, an association of progressive ministries called the Progressive Christian Alliance. And we're here as an association because we want to help people both like that man, uh, or actually several people, but I have one man in particular in mind. man in a coffee shop telling me he thinks Jesus is great and wishes we could learn more about him. And the church, he sees these higher places he could do it. And to help people like I was and my wife was at that moment, when we saw that people wanted to come into the doors of the church. And they're being told your kind heart welcome. Our, 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 our desire in the progressive Christian life is to help people like this. Build communities. For all are welcome. And where the life of Jesus is brought to life. So that people can discover who he is without fear and without fear. And so that those communities transform the world. So if you'd like to be part of that and learn about making some progressive uh, ministries happen, progressive churches happen, I encourage you to contact me. You can contact me at Reverend underscore Micah at Yahoo.com. You can also contact the Progressive Christian Alliance at info at Progressive Christian Alliance.org and be watching because. I hope this to be the first of many presentations I present about progressive Christian church planning. And I hope as you hear these, it will both light a passion in your heart if it's what God's calling you to do, but also in future sessions, that it will begin to show you some of the basics of what's needed to make that dream of these progressive communities that change your world for the better, a reality for you and for everyone, everywhere who feels in the world. Blessings and peace to you. May you sense Christ with you. And may you come to know the joy of walking with God.